In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Merry Easter. Merry Easter! We rejoice at the resurrection of our Lord, who conquered sin and death and brings us joy and eternal life. And so let us prepare room in our hearts, calling to mind the times we have sinned and asking the forgiveness of our loving Father in heaven. to heal the contrite of heart. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. this day through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, 
They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went off and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ is truly risen, alleluia. It's amazing how you can do that. Jesus rose from the dead, but the strongest believers didn't expect it, while the most skeptical prepared for it. The soldiers took Jesus' body down from the cross and laid him in his mother's arms. Then Joseph and Nicodemus took the body and laid him in the tomb. Now Mary, she did not doubt her son's death, nor did Nicodemus or Joseph of Arimathea, nor any of the apostles. They believed that he truly died on the cross. Some of them saw it with their own eyes, St. John, the Blessed Mother, Mary Magdalene. By all accounts, no one doubted Jesus' death, but those closest to him had forgotten that he had told them he would rise. They remembered that he said he would die. They forgot that he would rise. The apostles, for example, hid in the upper room the morning of the resurrection, And the women came to the tomb not in anticipation of seeing their Lord, but with hearts full of sorrow. They came not with wine and rich food to greet their triumphant king, but spices and oils to anoint a dead body. Those closest to him anticipated not resurrection, but how they would roll back the stone to the tomb. Mary Magdalene did not recognize the Lord because she thought he was dead. Only two of the apostles, Peter and John, would run to the tomb upon getting the word from the Magdalene, and these two had to be summoned. Whereas the Pharisees and the chief priests, well, they prepared. Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, after three days, I will be raised up. The scribes and Pharisees were so afraid, they asked Pilate to place soldiers to guard the tomb. Pilate instructed the guard, make the tomb as secure as you can. The unbelievers remembered the prophecy Jesus made that he would rise from the dead, it seems. Shocking, isn't it? A guard for the tomb of a dead man? We guard a bank vault or a prison or a movie star because we know what and who is inside. But those who refuse to believe Jesus all of his life put a guard outside the tomb of a dead man. No one anticipated the empty tomb except those who said they did not believe. Jesus, on the other hand, did not hesitate to show the unbelievers right. Jesus did rise. 
Jesus did conquer death. Jesus won the victory over the evil one. We know Jesus rose from the dead because of the credibility of the witnesses. When a witness knows beforehand what is going to happen, we may think they're a party to the scheme. But these witnesses had no idea what was about to happen. Further, no one gives their life to defend something they know to be a lie, do they? And yet, the apostles, our witnesses, did just that. If the resurrection was a scheme meant to deceive, then they would not have given their lives defending a lie. Quite on the contrary, the believing witnesses gave their lives for the truth. They did not expect, and the unbelieving witnesses lied to hide the truth of their crime because they did expect it. This makes indeed more sense than the other way around, doesn't it? We know that Christ rose from the dead because of the credibility of our witnesses. The question then for us is this. Do you prefer a savior who did in fact rise from the dead? Or would you prefer a man who teaches you how to be a good person? Do you prefer a savior who did in fact rise from the dead, or would you prefer a man who teaches you how to be a good person? Let me make the implication here more concrete. As we look around our world today, and we see not only the strife in far off lands, but also recognize that even our own best intentions can end badly. Do we need someone who is a good teacher or someone who is a savior? Do we need someone who articulates good principles even though we know we will have trouble living those principles? Or do we need someone who changes us from the inside out so that we can live those principles? Do we need someone who tells us that we should have hope in the face of death or someone who makes death a pathway to life? Both are good things, but one far transcends the other, doesn't it? When you hold the hand of your beloved as they leave this world, do you want someone speaking beautiful platitudes to you? or someone giving your beloved eternal life and eternal joy. The latter is the person we have in Jesus Christ. Indeed, a very fine teacher, but more importantly, a savior and the son of God. My friends, the evil of this world hits close to home. And this evil is what our Lord took upon himself on the cross, buried with him in the tomb so that life and joy might come out of the tomb. Hence, let us look beyond the immediate to the eternal. The resurrection challenges us to believe, to believe what our faith teaches is real, concrete, divine, eternal, and transcendent. Some people would call this formality, I call it serious life and death reality. And I think what we want our children to know about Jesus Christ is that he is real. We want them to know that what Jesus Christ teaches in his church matters more than anything else in the world because it is the most real thing in life. Because it is real and because it is so serious, what our Lord teaches us about himself and our lives in fact, is not our opinion. The truth of Jesus Christ and his church is not a human construct. This life or death truth is given to us by the one who loves us more than any other. The one who created us, knit us together in our mother's womb. In him, we need not be afraid. Our Catholic faith is not just spiritual, it is real and concrete and true. 
Indeed, when we celebrate the sacraments, God truly speaks to us in his word. And then Christ comes to us in the flesh in reality. When we baptize a baby, we don't just say the words of our Lord, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. No, not just that. No water is poured over the child's head and Christ comes to dwell within her. When we absolve the sins of someone who is dying, we don't do it virtually through the internet. The priest must be in the presence of the individual who is in need of Christ's forgiveness. And it is Christ who forgives them real Christ. When we celebrate this Eucharist as we do today, we don't only get a good feeling from a song we like. Our Lord is made truly present on the altar and truly and physically gives himself to us. Our faith goes beyond what we see and touch, no doubt, but God acts concretely in the here and now, too. And so God is not absent. He is acting right now, truly and in reality. Our hope is real. Jesus Christ does not simply teach us an important lesson. He transforms death and evil into life and joy. He takes the deepest struggle and turns it into a path to redemption. The lesson of Easter is of a real Lord who invites us into a saving relationship of love. Alleluia. Let us stand together. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works. I do. And all his empty show. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
Let us offer our prayers and petitions to our loving Father in heaven. That the church may boldly and faithfully proclaim the resurrection of Christ to all, we pray to the Lord. That the leaders of the world will give priority to the most innocent and helpless, we pray to the Lord. That in the light of Christ's victory over death, nations may work together, promote and protect respect for human life, we pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. And that the newly baptized and confirmed and those received into full communion with the Catholic Church may continue to grow in the knowledge and love of their Catholic faith. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, they may quickly return to health. For Mike Kilker Sr., we pray to the Lord. And for those who have died, that they may share in the glory of the resurrection. For Linda Barabat, Greg Trisk, Jean Mazza, and for all our beloved dead, we pray to the Lord. And for the intention of this Mass, Michael and Adele Mariano, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you grant all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in Paschal mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all, who, all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace 
and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count, counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to your God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place, place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. <laughs> yes. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Next Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday. Confessions will be offered at 2 p.m. in church, followed by a holy hour at 3 p.m. with recitation of the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. There will be no 4 p.m. confessions next Sunday. And the priest, deacons, and staff of St. Patronel wish you a truly blessed and joyful Easter celebration. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain forever. Amen. Born the peace of Christ, alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.